So this is Phys 2320 Computing 2 and this is the fourth unit in the set of videos on syn Python syntax. Um, so if you're registered on the module as a lead student you can download uh, the Jupyter Notebook that these slides are generated from um, as well as a PDF from Minerva uh, from the module pages. So in the first three units we covered uh, basic Python syntax, uh, we talked about flow control on statements and loops, and in the third unit we talked a little bit about data structures and in particular uh, dictionaries. So this unit we're going to focus on exception handling in Python. So first of all, just to revise um, what we mean by, by exception handling. So an exception is when you get either an error or some unexpected operation in your code. And Python allows you to go and detect when these have happened um, and to go and take some kind of action in response to having a, an exception. So it's quite important to understand exceptions are not necessarily bugs in your code, although um, bugs in your code do also create exceptions. They can also be caused by some kind of external event. So, for example, if you're writing a program that needs to read a web page from some website, if the website is unavailable, it'll probably give a, an exception. Um, or it might be because there are errors that have resulted because of incorrect data, um, uh, or something else has happened that was unexpected. The important thing is that a robust program will try and deal with these sorts of issues. Um, and if you think about it, there may be a, a number of different courses of action you might take um, depending on the type of error. So it might be possible to detect the error and simply try the operation again. So in our example of trying to read a web page from a, a website, you could simply just try and reload the website again and see if, it, if it's there. Um, another option you might be able to use is possibly to try and use some kind of backup data instead. Um, uh, that might be an appropriate thing if you've got a, a problem where you're trying to get a fresh load of data, but it doesn't really matter if you use slightly out of date data instead. Um, you could give the user a helpful warning message or ask the user to take some kind of corrective action to in, uh, and intervene in the problem. So this might be, for example, if you're asking the user to supply some values and they supply an incorrect value or an out of range value, you can say, oh, no, that's not going to work. Try picking a value that's that's going to work. And then finally, kind of the, the um, worst situation is that you're going to have to give up um, and terminate the program, but you can try and give the user as much information as possible um, about the problem and give it in some kind of helpful way that enable them to work out what to go and do instead. So the basic syntax um, uses try and accept. So this is stuff that was introduced in Computing 1. Um, so here's an example. Um, so the code that we're going to um, keep an eye open to see if it hits an exception goes inside a block following the keyword try. So in this particular example, we're just going to ask the user to enter a number, uh, to enter an integer, and then we're going to try and convert whatever they've typed into an integer, then divide 25 by it, and then take the square root. And then if there is a problem, then you'll have the um, accept clause. This is what happens. Um, the code inside that block runs when there's a problem. In this case, we simply print out um, that was an error and then print out what the error message was and also what type of error uh, Python thinks has happened. Um, so if we try this code out, um, if you put in a negative number, then you're going to end up doing the square root of a negative number. And because we're using the math module and not numpy module, it will throw an error. Um, and in particular, what it gives you is a math domain error, um, and it, this is a type of value error, and this is what it's going to told us. If you run the code and put a zero in there, you'll get a different sort of error. If you run in the code and type in Fred instead of a number, you'll get um, yet another type of error. So um, every, you get a number of different errors out of this, but in this code, it'll catch them and tell you what was going on. Okay. So the important thing is that you, the code you're testing is inside the try block and the response to the error goes inside an accept block. So as we said, there are a number of different potential problems you can get in this example. Um, if you get uh, different errors, depending whether you put a negative number or a zero, 
or putting in something that's not an integer at all. So Python allows us to go and detect uh, and respond differently to the different types of errors by having multiple accept blocks that go with each try. So in this example here, it's the same basic example, but now I've got an accept for a value error and an accept for a zero division error. Um, and so it'll do, you'll get different responses depending whether you put a negative number in or you put a zero in. And if I don't specify a type of error um, and just have an, an accept, then uh, that'll catch all the other remaining types of errors. Um, generally speaking, you probably don't want to do that very often because in most cases, you always want to allow the possibility there is in fact a genuine uh, bug in your code. And you want a genuine bug in your code to actually cause an error that's going to um, let you see what's going on. So you can do um, uh, things in, so for example, in this example, this code will never, ever uh, stop running. Um, no matter whether there's a problem or not in the code. So if you have a syntax error or you make a mistake inside the try block, then this code will carry on running. It'll print out there was some other error, but it'll keep on going. So you want to be a little bit careful about um, having um, accept clauses that will match any sort of error at all. But that's how you do it anyway. If we want to deal with two different types of error with the same in the same accept, then you do it like this. You put the two errors in what's technically a tuple, um, but you just put brackets in and then a list of the types of errors. Um, and then that will then catch both the value error and the zero division error in this case. Um, and it'll then print out the same error message. So now you might want to think about what happens if you um, want to make sure that there wasn't an error in the code. Um, so if you want to take some action, if it, if it didn't produce a, an exception, then you can have an else on your try block as well. So in this case, again, we've got the same um, uh, test we're trying to do. Um, and then we test for a value error and a zero division error. Uh, but then the else clause will happen if there was no error um, that resulted. So if you put in a legal number, so in this case four, then it says, OK, that's fine. No errors. Uh, and so it goes into the else clause. If there was an error, then it would have not gone into the else clause. It would have um, either been caught with an accept. So if I put in a zero or a negative number, in this case, it'll tell me there was a value error. Um, if there's some other error that wasn't a value error or a zero division error, then it will carry on and do the normal uh, thing that Python does when there's a problem. And it'll print out an error message um, and, and tell you what was going on. However, the final thing you sometimes need to go and do is you need to make sure that um, you, you might have some bit of code that has to run and you must absolutely make sure it runs no matter what happens. So whether there was an error or whether there wasn't an error, you need to always make sure you, you run some code. So a good example of this is if you're um, dealing with a file, um, so you, you've got a file that's open, you want to always make sure that the file gets closed properly at the end of um, your code, otherwise um, if you leave the file open, it might corrupt the file. Um, so to go and do this sort of thing, you can use a finally block. So in this case now, um, with our same example, you see I've added a finally um, to the end of this try block. Um, and now what happens is that no matter whether you have an error or whether you don't have an error, you always execute the, light, the code in the finally. Um, and that will happen even if there's an error that's not being caught. So in this example here, I've the, the accept block is just checking for a value error. So I've stopped it checking for a zero division error. So now when I type zero in, I create a zero division exception. That's then not handled by the accept. There was an exception, so it doesn't get handled by the else. But I do still come out through the finally. The finally will happen no matter what it's gone and done in the try block uh, and in the accept and the else blocks that go with it. So that's a kind of like fail safe, this really better always happen um, to make sure your code comes out.